Okay, I think this is set up on Zoom. Weird times y'all are in. I'm so glad you brought me back from the afterlife. It's very entertaining. It's so good to have you. So for our first question, um, tell us your name and a little bit about your project. Well, hello. My name is Olas Romer. I'm from Denmark. As a mathematician and astronomer, I have dedicated my life to science. One of my greatest accomplishments is discovering that light has a finite speed. Now, many believed that light speed was infinite, unmeasurable, but through unexpected revelations, I proved this theory wrong. What were you guys trying to do or find? Well, Jupiter had become an object of study during my lifetime. Its four satellites could be observed and through calculations, one can know their longitudinal coordinate and the universal time. In 1668, a table by Cassini was published that recorded the timings of eclipses for Jupiter's satellites or moons. I decided to record my own over a couple of years uh, of the satellite or moon, whichever you prefer, of Io. I found that the eclipse would vary in its timings as opposed to Cassini who said it was a constant time. When Earth was closest to Jupiter, the eclipse would occur 11 minutes too early. And six months later, when it was the furthest point from Earth, the eclipse would be 11 minutes too late. When I tried to make sense of this data, it occurred to me that the discrepancy occurred due to a finite speed of light. So, as you can see, I, I discovered something revolutionary without searching. Where did the project or experiment occur? I recorded my observations from the Observatory of Paris and brought my hypothesis for a finite speed of light to the French Academy of Sciences. What other significant events were happening around the world at that time? I was living right in the middle of the scientific revolution. Since my lifespan from 1644 to 1710, I got to see Galileo, Bacon, and even Newton all make great discoveries of our world. These and many more scientists were shaping the culture into one from faith-based alone to one that could be explained by science, concrete answers. It all started a hundred years ago before I was born with Copernicus discovering that Earth and the other planets rotated around the sun rather than the Earth being the center of our universe. He discovered the heliocentric view and that is when people started to ask questions and find answers. Who else was involved in the project? Well, I was a bit of a loner. I mostly worked on my own with the support of the French Academy of Sciences. But later, with the calculations of Christian Huygens, a Dutch scientist and mathematician, the rough estimate turned out to be 131,000 miles per second. Now that man, he went on to do great things. It's honor they used my work to start it. What impact did your project have on the physics community? With the speed of light later being refined through the work of Fizeau, Dorsey, and Froome, and many others, physics can use this quantity to discover more answers to the world around us. This speed is used widely in physics. I mean, have you ever heard about the relationship between wavelength and frequency? Now that is used all over physics. It is paramount in the study of electromagnetic waves, diffraction, relativity, and nuclear physics, and much, much more. And none of it would have made any sense if they did not know where the speed of light is. And that started with me your role in the project? Well, I would say I was the initiator. Since my discovery, the speed of light has been studied abundantly 
with your generation now knowing it to be 299,792,458 meters per second. That's exact. My work was the groundwork, but to being human, I made mistakes. Uh, at first, I calculated 11 minutes off of the eclipse, being too er 11 minutes too early and too late. Um, but later, in reality, it was 8 minutes too early and too late. So, I laid the groundwork for others. Last question. I thought, what else did you accomplish in your lifetime? My main passion was to improve the instruments used for scientific studies. I realized how ambient temperatures could alter results or give inaccurate results, and so I worked to develop a temperature scale which laid the groundwork for the Fahrenheit measurement. After my discovery that speed of light is finite, uh, I went on to be a professor at the University of Copenhagen, where I had previously been a student. And uh, years after, I was appointed to be royal astronomer and director of the observatory by the King of Denmark. I had a multitude of titles, but really, I dedicated myself to the efforts of improving Copenhagen uh, in regards to infrastructure, sewage systems, and business transaction. I even went on to be mayor. You know, over my lifetime, you could have called me an astronomer, an engineer, a physicist, and even a politician. So good to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been an absolute pleasure.